what's it like to win two awards for outstanding writing in one weekend? Um, we're going to find out today as we speak with the author, now award-winning author, Kristen Hogriff. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Awards for outstanding. I'm doing well. How are you? Uh, we're having a little bit of a crazy ride here, but we're going to smooth out. The Holy Spirit's going to help us, and we're just going to have a really good visit. Um, so tell me, Kristen. Oh, well, let me introduce myself. Hi, I'm Patricia Dirk, and the Christian Message Coach, and this is Marketers on a Mission, the live show for every Christian with a message to market. And Kristen definitely has a message to market. She's uh, written very uh, several books already. Is it six, Kristen? Six written, five published. Uh, and the sixth one is due out in February. Am I remembering that? Yes. yes, the last book in that trilogy. So very exciting to see that come full circle. And and when did you start writing, Kristen? How long ago? I started writing. Basically, it started in middle school. And it's kind of a funny story because my older brother had a creative writing assignment. And he just thought it was the best thing. And so he shared it with my twin brother and me and our best friends. And so we ended up writing these crazy chapter book stories from this creative writing assignment. And uh, even after everyone else kind of got tired of it, I loved it. And so I kept writing and I wrote sequels and, oh. and all of them thankfully never got published. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that's really where it started with my, my older brother's writing assignment well isn't it interesting how the Lord gives us opportunities that are completely unexpected sources oh absolutely <laughs> that lead us to the dream that he has for us in our life mm. he's so organized and so creative <laughs> he is, even when we're not <laughs> absolutely uh, on your website you explain that you write fiction for young adults but you also spread that out and say you know it's also for people of any other age and you invite them, each of your readers, to grow along with your characters as they, as the books move along. Why is that so important to you, Kristen? Well, my, my heart is for, for young adults and just to reach them with, you know, entertaining, clean fiction. But beyond that, I think, I, I like to say I write for the young adults and the young at heart because mm -hmm. it's not just young adults who are reading young adult fiction. Lots of adults enjoy this genre, and, and I think it's just because it appeals so much to, you know, the desire for adventure, the desire to, to grow, and, and I don't think that's something that should stop, you know, once you graduate. I think it's something that's ongoing. God's constantly at work in our lives, and I think that applies, I know it applies to me, and I'm not a teenager anymore, so um, that's why I really, I love the idea of thinking that young people and, you know, their parents or their, their older friends, like they can all enjoy that type of story together. How did you discover that it wasn't limited? Your writing was intriguing to people outside of the typical age range of young adults. How did you discover that? Sure. Well, I kind of discovered it when I wrote my, my first trilogy, which I tell people I, I really, I, I started from scratch. I didn't know much about the industry. And so um, after querying and getting all those necessary rejections um, and polishing more, I ended up self-publishing that, that trilogy. And it was so interesting to me because so many of the people reading it were adults. And then they would pass it on to their kids or their grandkids or, oh, my grandchild has to read this because I loved it so much. And I'm thinking, wow, okay, so this isn't just young adult fiction. Uh, even though the heroes and heroines are young adult age, uh -huh. it really resonated with that older audience as well. That's pure market research right there, isn't it? <laughs> Free, pure market research done by yours truly, yeah. <laughs> that is great, great, great. To be able to find that out at this beginning stages of your writing career, that's a real benefit, isn't it? Oh, I, I think so. And, and I think it's just... It teaches me something too, because you know, as as I as I get older, I'm still wanting to read young adult fiction. I'm wanting to read books that are challenging me to continue growing. And even even sometimes when I hear people say, "Oh, I've got life figured out," which I'm never going to say that because I don't know when it's going to happen. <laughs> um, we we constantly, you know, life throws a curveball or God humbles us, you know, and, and we constantly need that reminder to keep growing. So I, I think that's just the general appeal that there's always going to be challenges we need to overcome. And young adult fiction showcases that really well. 
And, and those are uh, universal, aren't they? They happen to everybody at different stages of life. Right. There's no period of, there's no age range or any financial mm. balance in your, in, your, in your bank account. At no right. point as a human being do we stop having issues to deal with, do we? Right. We, we don't always arrive. always need God. Exactly. <laughs> I think that's his intention. I think that's why he keeps giving us those challenges and, you know, changes in life just to remind us, hey, you need me. Did you forget? You need me. <laughs> I, I so agree. Let me check really quick and see if we have any uh, Facebook questions or comments. And let's see here. Not yet. Not yet. But here we are. There we are right online. We're right where we belong. <laughs> now, tell me, we talked yesterday, I think it was, that your next book is going to be released in February. And it is written but not yet published. That's what you mentioned, right? Earlier, right? Mm -hmm. All right. So for those of us who have not yet um, maybe we're just starting our writing journey and or we are just beginning the process or somewhere in the process of publishing our first book. Sure. What is going to fill your writing calendar between now that the book is finished, you've finished writing it and creating it, but it's not published yet. What's in between there? Give us some ideas, please, of the steps that are involved. Oh, there are so many. <laughs> <laughs> well, right now it's on my editor's desk and she and and other readers are going to go through that and do that preliminary edit. And there's varying stages of that. You get a galley proof, you make more edits, you read it again. It's funny when I think about how many books I read a year, I always want to say, can I count mine? Because I read them so many times. <laughs> that really up your number, wouldn't it? <laughs> it really would. Goodreads does not reflect how many books I read a year. Um, but yeah, so there's a lot of back and forth. The covers are primarily done, but we still have to finalize the back cover copy, uh, update images, update the copyright page information. So there's a lot of back and forth and checking. And then of course, once that process is done, we invite some early readers to give us some additional feedback. And meanwhile, we're writing press releases and I'm writing dozens of blog posts and all the prep work that goes into a successful launch. So, and a lot of that is really due to the people who are your tribe, you know, getting together a, a tribe of people. Some people call them street teams um, who really, who, who get your vision and, and love it and they want to share it too. And, and without those people, you, you can't have a successful launch. It changes the whole trajectory, doesn't it? It does. And then it doesn't feel like you're an Island, you yeah. know, it, it's you've got a team behind you and of course you know my editor and her team are fabulous but having these other people other close friends you know fans friends just involved that just makes it such a more rewarding experience did you do all of these uh, the, the marketing that you do now with the editor and the publishing house did you do those things did you know to do them when you self-published your first trilogy not all of them. <laughs> uh, and it's interesting. I, I took a really good course at Blue Ridge. And I know several people watching probably shared in Blue Ridge. Um, a great course by Vincent Davis on Amazon and using Kindle Unlimited to promote your books. And so I think much of it I had done and had learned, but much of it, it, it was really good to see with fresh eyes to know I can go back and I can still, I can go and do these things with my, my first trilogy. I can use some of those techniques in my, my current one. So I think it's just that constant state of learning and growing. Mm -hmm. And so I wish I had known then what I know now, but I know what I know now is not what I will know yes. a year from now. So <laughs> that's, right. that's right. Do you have occasion to being interviewed on podcasts and other marketing outreaches like that? Um, I have been interviewed Bethany Jett and um, Vicki, and there, there's a really amazing team. They do writer's chat. And so I think that's 11 o'clock. I don't remember what day of the week. So I've shared with them. Um, I've shared. Um, I teach for Serious Writer Academy. So sometimes I get a chance to share. And a lot of the times I'm sharing because other people, you know, there are other writers. We're all on this journey together. And it's all about what can, what can I learn from you? What can you learn from me? And um, I just always enjoy those opportunities. I, I, I wanted to I know that you're involved in Blue Ridge Christian Writers Conference, and we are going there in just a moment. But before that, let's talk about what you do in addition to that, because you've got, you work, of course, and you yes. serve the children, is it children or preteens? 
Same I was involved in my church's youth ministry for quite a few years, and now I'm kind of plugged into the young professionals ministry at my church. So, yeah, I, I stay I stay busy. <laughs> That's still your age range, isn't it? Mm -hmm. um, do you think that that age range will um, morph as you get older yourself? Because it doesn't have to. It's not a given. Right. That's an interesting question. I think it's more of me realizing that regardless of whether you're in high school or college or post-college, I'm finding you, you face a lot of the same challenges, but in different ways or, mm -hmm. or almost different degrees. So the challenge might, you know, finding a new job for the graduate, that's one set of challenges. But what if you have a career change? I had a career change in, in my twenties. So same situation, different level. So I, I'm just kind of seeing this, continuity of, of challenges that just it's ongoing during your life. And I think when I can take that and encourage somebody who's maybe back where I used to be, um, and then at the same time seek mentorship from people who are a little farther down the road than I am. So I think there really is a, a continuity there. I so agree. I, I, I just uh, have been in a, I'm an observer. I am an observer. Mm -hmm. and I've noticed that myself in my life and many other friends lives through the years, um, and one of the blessings of that is if you've got that ability and you do, then no matter who you're talking to, you'll be able to plug in and serve them in a way that fits them and their, not only their situation, but their age range perfectly without, uh, even as you age yourself. Right. <laughs> Cause the, sir, oh. just, that's the master plan in it. <laughs> right. <laughs> So now you're also involved with Word Weavers and Serious Writer Academy. You just mentioned that a moment ago. Tell yeah. us about those two um, uh, groups, please. Sure. Word Weavers International is just an outstanding international. It, it just continues to grow. And Eva Marie Everson, the founder and president, she's always sharing about just how exponential the growth is for this group because uh, it's a group of writers. They can meet on location in cities. I'm part of an online group. Um, so we meet Zoom, we use Zoom or Google Hangouts, and we share our work and we critique our work. And the main thing is we use that sandwich method, which probably you're familiar with, where we start, you know, okay, this is, this is excellent. You've got a really strong plot or premise, uh, but your character development's a little weak. You shift point of view. But hey, once you fix that point of view, you're really going to have me hooked with this character. So you kind of take that sandwich approach and, and provide not only the accountability to keep writing, but also just the encouragement and the critique because Eva Marie, I hear her say all the time, word weavers, people recognize them for their quality and craftsmanship. So I'm honored to be a page president and part of that group. And there's really just an awesome team um, behind it all. Now, a lot of my viewers are spread out all over the country. Mm -hmm. I'm, in, I'm in Georgia, other people in, you know, uh, the West Coast. So sure. if, if they're here and they're watching either live or the replay, how can they hook up to a Word Weavers group in their city? That's if a great need, question. Do they need to be in their city? You just mentioned online is also an option. Yes, it is. So it's wordweaversinternational.org or .com. I'd have to double check. Um, and there is a lot of information there. They can choose to find out if they have a group in their city. Uh, oftentimes it's larger cities. Like for me, I'm in Florida. So Orlando, Tampa, um, I'm North of Tampa. So I didn't really want to join the Tampa group because of the commute. And so yeah, online I have in my group, I've got a Canadian, <laughs> I've got Floridians. Um, I've got somebody from Illinois. So we're spread out all over the place, but we connect right here online. So there's that beauty of not having to leave your own home, which also oftentimes appeals to introverts. <laughs> <laughs> Do you feel that you're an introvert? I'm an extroverted introvert. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm an introvert so at heart, but I have extroverted tendencies. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, <that's, coughs> excuse me, that's the first time I've heard that particular phraseology for that, <laughs> that description. <laughs> Let me see if we have any comments or questions while we're here. Are you an extrovert? Um, uh, yes. Okay, that was going to be my guess. You host a, a show. Most introverts, that would not occur to us to do. 
outside of her comfort zone. <laughs> it's a little bit crazy to host a live show. You never know what's going to happen. We had a little bit of a glitch when we connected today. And yet it's so fun. It's sort of like riding a bronching, a bucking bronco. You mm -hmm. just never know what's going to happen, <laughs> what direction it's going to take. You really have to be on your toes and stay alert at all times. <laughs> So you extroverts love that spontaneity. So, hey. <laughs> yes, we do. We do. Guilty as charged. <laughs> so now what about Serious Writer Academy? That's a different thing altogether from Word Weavers International. What's going yes. on there with you? So Kyle Young and Bethany Jett partnered together to create Serious Writer. And, and then they invited so many of their author friends to teach on specialties and different subjects. Um, oftentimes that maybe we've taught at conferences, but I'm talking like Michelle Medlock Adams, um, Bethany already mentioned, Vicki. Um, there's just so many. Uh, Tessa Emily Hall teaches as well. There's so many different people who bring so much to the plate. And so they've created this academy so that we can teach courses from platform building to nonfiction to fiction to the business side of writing. And so, you know, people who may not have the luxury of going to a conference or who come back from a conference feeling a little brain dead and wanting to learn more at their own pace. Um, so that's where Serious Writer really comes into play and gives them the chance to, at their own pace, absorb information and learn um, so that they can t continue to improve as well. Yes. And you're an instructor there, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Which two classes do you do? Which ones do you teach? Oh. I teach... Uh, again, because of my background and kind of troubleshooting, um, I teach one on MailChimp and then one on WordPress. And I'm really excited because I'm working on Can uh, one on Canva as well, which is a really neat design tool that'll help writers just visually add graphics and memes to their websites. And, and I did a fun class at the Florida conference this year. And just based on that reception, I was like, I need to put this into a class as well. So that mm. one's that one's on the agenda. <laughs> I, I have a, a more advanced program that I use for graphic arts, but mm -hmm. when I saw Canva, it came out several years ago. It was just a total game changer, wasn't it? It really was, yes. And if you don't want to have to invest in, you know, Photoshop or InDesign, mm -hmm. it's it's really great for a, a simple investment and being able to do most of what you need to do. Yes, and and it's free if you want it to be. You can mm -hmm. even and it can be free exactly. Uh, lots of variables there, lots of op opportunities, and even when you pay, it's still a nominal fee compared to the big dogs, the big programs. It is <clears throat> absolutely. I'm glad that you're doing that, Canva, because it's so helpful to everybody who uses it. Um, let me see. Um, Let's talk about conferences. <laughs> yeah, I know it's hard to believe it's been what two weeks now since Blue Ridge, and I still feel like all of us are just absorbing everything that happened. Are you still on the cloud, <laughs> maybe. But then you know I come back to work and reality sinks in a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Although I do love my job, I, I teach for Alpha Omega Academy online and could not ask for a better team there. But yeah, have to enjoy the cloud, but also. Get back to the yeah. get back to the commitments. <laughs> was Blue Ridge the very first conference you went to, or did you go to the Florida conference first? I've been to the Florida conference for uh, six or seven years now. So I that was my very first conference as a writer. Had no idea what to expect, and then after attending a few years, Eva Marie Everson was just so gracious to let me share some of my troubleshooting um, classes with people, and then I just heard amazing things about Blue Ridge and. Just really prayed about prayed about it and wanted to go this year and God just opened the doors and so oh. it was it was an amazing experience. It, was this your first year at Blue Ridge? It was my first year at Blue Ridge. Well, that makes the rest of the news so even even more exciting. How wonderful! Yes. You won two awards. Most people are just fortunate to win one, and the Lord blessed you with two. The I was excited to be a finalist. <laughs> <laughs> I would have gone home okay with that. <laughs> yes, yes. You won the Sailor Award and the Director's Choice Award. Mm -hmm. Tell us about those two awards, please, and what benefit it will be to you as you as your writing continues to have received that. Sure. Well, I know, and I've heard, I know Kyle Young and several other people say, just enter enter contests. First of all, it gives you critique. You know, some of them even send you feedback afterwards. Mm -hmm. um, just helps kind of you know, also gives you some visibility. So if you final, whether you win or not, I think that's one of the main benefits is people start to recognize who you are and that they take you more seriously. Oh, you don't just show up to a conference 
to take workshops, but never act on them. You are actually writing. You're actually mm -hmm. contributing to to the conference itself as far as content. And so I think that really helps. So I always encourage people enter, you know, whether you win or not keep entering. It's, I go back to when I was in college and very much an introvert and not an extroverted introvert at that time. <laughs> and I auditioned for, it was an ensemble and I didn't make it. And then I just quit. And I look back, I'm like, why did I quit? You got to just keep, you got to keep going. So even if you, and there's been many conferences where I have attended and my submission hasn't placed. So the key is just to keep at it. Um, I'm trying to remember what book it was where I read in order to really become, in order to really excel at something, you have to have like 10,000 hours of practice in. Mm -hmm. And so I tell people all the time, you got to practice. You got to put in those lonely times where you're just pecking at your keyboard um, in order to get to that finish line. Yes. And then it's just really another starting line because it just keeps going. Exactly. That's exactly right. And don't you feel that even if you don't place or win, there's an added level of accountability, even if it's just Absolutely. between you and the whole spirit. Mm -hmm. Right. Because you have entered, you've, you've submitted it. It's a step of, I'm taking this seriously myself. Yes. Mm -mm -mm. And we're not going to get further along in our writing or our speaking career until we see ourselves as a writer or a speaker. Is that correct? Absolutely. You know, and not that being a writer defines who I am because ultimately I'm, I'm God's child, mm -hmm. but it's part of the gifting that he's asked me to steward. And so I want to be accountable so that one day I'm going to hear that well done, you know, whether, whatever that looks like, you know, whether it's that one talent or the five talents and, and that's up to him, but you, you and I just have to be faithful with stewarding whatever we've been given. Absolutely. I'm trying to see if there's anybody here using a diff different method if we're having anything. We have Chloe. I'm s oh, Chloe says she is somewhat of an extroverted introvert. Too, so hey, like see, we're going to coin this term. It's going to be <laughs> legit. <laughs> oh, gracious. Now, the, what, is the, what do you have to do to win the Salo Award? What does it mean? What does it represent to a writer and or a reader who is looking at trying to decide this book or this book, you know, this author or that author, and this one has won a Sailor Award. What does that mean? Well, I know for me, as you know, I've becoming, I've been learning more and more about Christian fiction in the industry. I, I'll, I'll hear Sailor Award or Christie Award, and, and obviously there's different levels and different genres, but to me it's just like, wow, you know, that person has worked really hard to get to that point. Mm -hmm. And it kind of makes me want to find out, well, what are they doing? What can I learn from them? Or um, even just, wow, this is probably really quality fiction I can enjoy when I'm on a vacation. Mm -hmm. So I think, again, it's just that level of a little bit more credibility. Mm -hmm. um, and then just the recognition that, hey, you, you've done a really good job. Um, and other people recognize it and not just your family. Because although I love knowing that my family loves my work, they are slightly prejudiced. So um, it's nice getting that affirmation from somebody else. <laughs> I understand completely what you meant. <laughs> it is a wonderful thing for someone who has nothing to gain and who mm -hmm. knows more than we do to s turn and say, you have what it takes. Mm -hmm. That's what we hope to hear all the time. And most writers work in, in isolation. We do. So we have somebody else stand along beside us and publicly say something positive and reaffirming. And we have met a standard. Mm -hmm. um, I think that one of the things that we miss as we, as we start the process of writing or speaking is that there are standards and we miss that. We're not just, as you move to another professional level, the standards get higher or they are more strict. It's mm -hmm. not do your best and it's all going to work out. Um, and we shouldn't be apologetic for that. It needs to happen that way. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Rejections teach us more about what we can improve on. And without, you know, without the times I've met with people and they say, Hey, this, you know, you've got a neat idea here, but it's not quite ready or it's not a good fit. Mm -hmm. We shouldn't take those personally. I know we probably use the term rhinoceros skin. We got to get past that. This isn't personal. This is designed to help you be better. And I mean, you talk to, I've talked to several agents who will say, Hey, maybe I turned you down once, but that doesn't mean you can't resubmit to me. Mm. So they want us to improve. They want us to get better. And then when they see that we're willing to take the criticism and grow from it, I think that just earns respect. Yes. Yes. I so agree. Now, what was, 
your biggest takeaway other than obvious two awards <laughs> when you went to Blue Ridge Christian Blue Ridge Mountains Christian Writers Conference this year it just ended for those watching our replay mm -hmm. um, it just ended as annual it comes every year so we can you can sign up I'll put that link above the video when we're finished with this episode as well as all the links that we're referencing in um, Kristen's interview today but what did you learn did you go up another step did you focus on social media what was your big thing from the classes and the workshops and the people that you met the professionals that you met at Blue Ridge there are so many takeaways. It's really hard to pick just one, but I mean, I always go number one with the relationships um, that the people you meet, you can't put a price tag on that. You know, editors and agents are sitting with you at breakfast, joking with you, taking goofy pictures. I mean, you can't get that. I mean, Cynthia Recti, she is our breakfast buddy and shared with us, you know, her own insights, asked us questions. Um, just, you know, and people you meet in those appointments. Um, I met with Steve Lobby and Jan Stobe and and whether or not that conversation you know goes the direction you think it's gonna go just their heart and their desire to meet with you and invest in you and affirm you at the same time wow hey yes you just keep doing what you're doing somebody told me just because I don't currently represent that um, you've got the right idea here so I think you go to these conferences especially to somebody maybe who's watching and has never gone you go to meet people in the industry learn from them, soak it all up. Um, and then you build friendships along the way. Um, I met Blythe Daniels in the airport going and coming back. And I feel like we're airport buddies. Um, she's just so sweet and willing again to share anything she can, even though she's primarily nonfiction and, and I'm fiction. Um, we're building a friendship. So I would say that's the biggest takeaway. And then as far as workshops, again, there were so many good ones. It was, it was brutal to have to to fill my schedule. Um, but at this point it was, it was neat because I was talking to agents and I was talking, you know, going to social media classes. And then I, I almost found myself like finishing sentences. I'm like, Oh, I really have come a long way. I know some of these answers. So <laughs> that was also pretty exciting. Uh, even on your website, you, you really encourage people to go to writers groups, local or national or international online or offline find a writer's group you say mm -hmm. and also that you're a big proponent of writers conferences do you feel that you would be where you are now if you had not if well let me back up if you had stayed the course your original course and you were just doing your best and submitting things through, through mail or email absolutely not no. And I know as a newbie, not knowing, I mean, cause you see the price tag on conferences and sometimes that's just a huge, Oh, am I going to get, um, am I going to get a return on that investment? And it can be really scary for new writers who, who aren't sure, but knowing now what I didn't know then absolutely go save up for it, apply for scholarships. Um, most conferences have them enter contests, um, make the most of it. Don't just show up not having looked at the schedule, you know, really plan ahead, do your research on who you want to meet with. Um, but there's just so much you take away and then you can, you know, buy the videos and, and be learning all year long as well. So um, it's not something that ends at the conference. The, the value continues long afterwards. That's a great point. That's an excellent point to make. And once you're finished next, next February, you're going to launch your next book. Will you continue with these series, create a new trilogy, or are you branching out into a different area, do you know, yet? I'm really prayerfully considering that one, and I was kind of looking for direction even at Blue Ridge, because I've had some back burner projects, not really sure which one I should jump on next, and so I got some really almost unexpected feedback on which one might be the most interesting to or most relevant mm -hmm. to today's audience. So I'm going to continue to pray about that and be working on those in between galley edits and all those yeah. fun things. <laughs> but you had access to people who had different thoughts and they Absolutely. know what they're talking about. So again, exactly. It's wonderful for our best friends and our next door neighbors and our Sunday school teacher to encourage us. We never turn down encouragement. Right. But that's not the same as, a professional who's been doing this for decades and sees what they need to see in your message or your integrity or your giftedness, whatever it is that they notice, uh, then you can, they, that, that connection is nothing like it, is there? Mm -mm. No, 
I mean, they know that we go to all the conferences. I go to maybe two a year, one a year. Um, so yeah, they can definitely, and they're more than willing to share that too, which is just a tremendous in, blessing. In the world that we typically live in, that's not normal, is it? There's a lot of competition and you have to know, you have to be in the clique, you have to be in the club and you have to, you have to reach a certain level of experience or talent or fill in the blank before the big dogs are going to talk to you. Right totally different at a writer's conference it is it's uh i'm here to help you and can you help me great i mean i had so many of those conversations at lunch i wasn't on faculty at blue ridge like i had been in florida but i felt like i was having like one-on-one -on -one mentor sessions with people who didn't understand mailchimp or people who had never even heard of canva for creating graphics you know and it was neat it's like god puts you just where that person needs you and you can trust him to put somebody else where where you need them and and that's just God's handiwork coming together. That's the way he does it. <laughs> and he makes it all sure. seem so natural, doesn't he? It does. When we stress about it, I don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> Step into the grace that's there. Yes, yes, yes. So now let me see if I have anything else. Where can we find you online? Because we want to find you online. Well, I'm on, I have my website, kristenhogreff.com, which is not easy to spell. Um, so that's why you'll have the link. <laughs> Um, but I'm on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn. Um, so find me, friend me. Um, I'd love to love to hear from from everybody. And you have an Amazon page as well. Yes, and I do have an Amazon page too. I'll link to that as well. And um, BookBub, which is kind of new for me, but I'm on BookBub. So if you're on BookBub, come say hi. <laughs> you know, I've heard of that, but I'm not familiar with it very much. Give me a little bit of education on BookBub, please. So it's a little. I'm also on Goodreads, and I love Goodreads because that's kind of where writers talk each other's language about books and, and obsess about books. You don't see that on other social media sites. So I love that about Goodreads. BookBub is similar in that you as an author can create a page and add your books, but then you can also recommend others books. And so in that sense, it's a little bit of networking, but BookBub, BookBub runs promotions. And so you can find some really good deals on trending books. Oh. Um, authors can run promotions, although I've heard they're a little pricey, but worth the investment. So I'm still kind of new. Wouldn't be the person to give like an expert critique on it, but I really like what I'm seeing so far. Um, you seem to be somebody who is uh, interested in trying new things and seeing where the Lord, the, does the door open? Let's walk through yeah. it and see how. <laughs> So oh yeah, that kind of became my motto. Somebody said, Kristen, God may not open a door unless you're willing to try the door handles. So mm -hmm. I would say, okay, I'm going to try it. And if you don't want me to open this one, just slam it in my face. <laughs> <laughs> and, he, um, and, he's usually and he does when, when necessary. Yes. Just checking really quick to see if there's anything else. Nope. We're good. Uh, let's see. This has been episode 58 of Marketers on a Mission. My interview with award winning author, Kristen Hogreff. Thank you so much for joining me, Kristen. Thank you so much for having me. This was, this was great. Uh, you have a lot of energy. You're obviously on the move. The Holy Spirit is blessing you and your work. Yeah, people who aren't doing anything don't get awards. <laughs> it's a lot of, it's a lot of hard work. It really is. Uh, and what's the most rewarding part of it? It is hard work. What is the most rewarding part? The most rewarding part, that is when you connect with a reader. And so quick story, a Blue Ridge uh, award-winning author as well, Lindsay Brackett, who took home, I think, three awards. She really swept. Um, she, her daughter came with her, and she calls her my fangirl because she's read my books and <laughs> loves them, wants to be an advanced reader. And so even though those plaques were beautiful and I was just completely honored, Getting to meet her daughter and hear her talk about my books and what she wants to see in the third one and what she hopes is going to happen, like, you can't top that. You can't top it. So that's, that's what's most rewarding for me. How wonderful. How wonderful. I'm tickled that you had that opportunity. Oh, me too. I was like, okay, forget the awards. I want a picture with her daughter. <laughs> <laughs> because that's what you're doing it for, not that's, the awards. That's my audience. I'm reaching. When I get to reach my audience and see them take away something whether or not it's what I thought they would take away or something completely different but they're taking something away that's what I'm like yes Lord yes thank you that's that's what I want to see how wonderful how wonderful so we are um, closing this interview out we may have another one in the future maybe in February that would be wonderful <laughs>
as part of your marketing campaign, please feel free to come back and join us again and let us know, keep up with what you're doing and how the Lord is blessing you and your work. Um, Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. You're very welcome. Uh, now, for everybody else who's watching, please join me again tomorrow right here at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time when I'm going to show you my new approach to social media and how it's helping me market my message and find a new audience. Until then, I'm Patricia Durgan, the Christian Message Coach, and I pray this show helps you get one step closer to marketing the good news online. Thanks for joining us today. See you tomorrow.